His name is Kendrick Castillo. This is my son. You know, he's the only son that I'll ever have. Um, and I want the world to know my story about him. They will know he acted heroically, rushing a shooter to save his classmates. I gave my teacher a hug and I just said thank you, you know, because if it wasn't for her, I could have died. A student takes us inside another classroom where a teacher became the protector. And we'll look at the security Stem Highlands Ranch chose to have instead of a dedicated sheriff's deputy. Then the Mile High City getting higher. Voters decide to decriminalize hallucinogenic mushrooms. It's a surprise twist after Election Day. That's next. We have created a culture where kids are forced to be heroes in order to stop other kids with guns in their classrooms. Just ask you to keep that in mind as we remember Kendrick Castillo and as we honor the actions of his classmates, Brendan Viley and Joshua Jones. They stepped up to put their lives in danger to save others because we as a society cannot keep them safe at school. Kendrick Castillo was 18. He is forever 18. Killed three days before his last day of high school. He rushed the shooter in his classroom, giving his classmates time to find cover. Our son paid the price and others are able to go home. Okay. Um, thank God for that. I want the world to know that he was a kind, compassionate person who was selfless and, and gave up his life to protect others. John and Maria Castillo said something astonishing today for its honesty and its impact. They wondered aloud how they will grapple with the guilt of raising the kind of kid who will stand and fight rather than run and hide. They acknowledge that the values that they instilled in him is what propelled him toward the danger and not away. I think of his grandfather. I think, I think of a Marine veteran that defended our country. And I think of my son walking in his footsteps and doing the same thing in a different way. Friends describe him as kind, dedicated to helping others. Kid who's passionate about technology. A few years back, Kendrick was featured in his hometown paper, the Highlands Ranch Herald, for channeling his dedication to learning about tech to become an intern at a manufacturing company. Brendan Biley was one of two other students who also acted in that split second. He says that he jumped in to help after seeing his friend Kendrick tackle the shooter. So he had three kids acting in that moment when no adult stood between them and a classmate with a gun. What I saw yesterday was the absolute best of people. I got to see uh, two, two heroes, two regular high school kids, two really awesome people uh, jump into action without any hesitation, and I was more than lucky to join them. The third student involved is this young man, Joshua Jones. His family released a written statement today saying that Joshua was, sh was shot twice during the struggle. He's home from the hospital at this point. Two of the eight STEM Highlands Ranch students who went to the hospital yesterday are still there, and Littleton Adventist says both of them are improving and are no longer in serious condition. Schools closed for the remainder of the week. Students are at home with their families, sharing their experiences as they feel comfortable. And it gives us insight into all of the people who acted in that moment. 13-year-old Sophia Funk was in a classroom right next to the shooter. Sophia and her mother say one woman saved Sophia's life and many others. I just cannot believe this is part of my life now. It's part of the reality for a lot of parents. We were talking about why we shouldn't joke about school shootings. And my teacher, her name was Miss Pritchett, she said uh, that she was 10 minutes away from Columbine when it happened. And we just started to hear the gunshots. She turns the lights off, she turns the blinds off, and then she just tells everyone to sit there and be quiet. It's, it's very emotional, to be honest with you. Some of the stuff she just told you it's the first time when I hear that, and it's, it's hard. There was just overall panic. The girl next to me was crying. I, I started panicking, but then I just started to remember how fortunate I've been and how good of a family and how good of a life I've had. And I shouldn't take things for granted because you never know which day might be your last. She told me the story about how her teacher acted, and I, I never met her teacher. I, I truly believe she saved our children. But I'll just really never forget anything that happened, especially the look in my teacher's eyes as she um, pulled the magnet up above the lock and she closed the door. I saw terror. 
she visibly knew something was wrong. She just, she, she looked kind of confused, but then she closed the door, she looked outside, and then she just told us to get down. Yes, she went through some training, but we're human beings. One thing is training, another thing is a real reality. And she, she acted as a hero. She put our needs in front of hers, even though she has a small child and a family. She did the right thing. Thank you doesn't do the gesture. It's, it's not the thank you, just it's the whole world she saved for me and for my husband as well, for my whole family. And I'll just never forget what she did. Tomorrow, the Crisis Support Center for the Stem Highlands Ranch community will be open once again. It's at St. Andrew United Methodist Church from 11 in the morning until 3 p.m. The 18-year-old student accused in the shooting came to court for the first time this afternoon. Devin Erickson is being held on suspicion of first-degree murder and 29 counts of attempted first-degree murder. The second suspect, described as another shooter by deputies yesterday, is a 16-year-old. Maya McKinney is a transgender male who goes by the name Alec. DA is still deciding whether to file adult charges against him. Both suspects are being held without bond. There's no school resource officer from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office dedicated to the STEM school. That school hires private security, which staff the campus with one guard. The company is Boss High Level Protection. Their website says they provide security for businesses, places of worship, and schools. We talked to one of the executives there who confirmed for us that the security guard at the STEM Highlands Ranch campus is a Marine, a former Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy, and that he drew his weapon on one of the suspects. He confronted the shooter, um, took the shooter into custody by putting handcuffs on that person and turning that person over to law enforcement when they arrived. We train them in one and two man response to the active shooter, just like we do law enforcement. So uh, this young gentleman, like I said, was a Marine, a law enforcement officer, then we uh, trained him in one and two man response to the active shooter. So he was trained just for an incident like yesterday. They told us that the number of security officers assigned to the school is not their call. They said they only provide what the customer, in this case, the charter school, requests. Colorado native Chris Vanderveen was one of the first reporters on the scene yesterday. Chris woke up today, felt the need to share this. It is our state, my state, a state I love, a state with every reason for everyone in it to love it. People are coming here to be part of something special. Yet the state of this state is not good. Columbine, Century 16, Platte Canyon High School, Arapahoe High School, Planned Parenthood, YWAM, New Life, a Walmart and Thornton, and now STEM School, Highlands Ranch. Something is wrong. And if you're not concerned, you're not paying attention. And if you're not paying attention, it's time to say you are part of this problem. Colorado, we own this. We own what we have become. Can we in our newsroom do better? Absolutely. We all have a role in making sure whatever it is that currently ails us is something that must have a cure. Don't consider this political. Right now, I honestly do not care about your thoughts on guns or prayers or mental illness or religion or whatever words you want to yell at this moment. When those words are followed with nothing more than more words, those words are hollow, meaningless. Something must change today, tomorrow, because our children have become far too used to a world where this is normal. And I refuse to believe this is normal because today I owe it to my nine-year-old daughter to acknowledge that the state of my state, your state, her state, is not good. Today we learned the name Kendrick Castile. All of 18 years old, he stood up and said enough and lost his life in the process. He is what we can be. He is what we should be. It is time to acknowledge we can be better than what we are when we join with that 18-year-old and say, enough. Hallucinogenic mushrooms in Denver. As this city makes history, they are decriminalized for the first time in America. 
And let's find some reason to smile today, even if it is something as simple as sisters who ride every day, rain or shine, and I bet they will also ride in the snow that we'll be getting soon. Next. People from across the country will be planning a trip to Denver as we've become the first city in America to decriminalize magic mushrooms. Initiative 301 was failing when we went to bed last night. Today, shrooms zoomed back into the lead by the final count. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger is here. And Marshall, people could be tripping ballots by the time they vote in the mayoral runoff next month. Yeah, you found out there's really no start date on this, so it's not clear. Is this in effect as of right now? Will it be in effect sometime next month? The city is still trying to work that out. These are the final unofficial numbers for decriminalizing magic mushrooms. 89,000 people in favor, giving it that 50.5%, and the opposed 87,000 against. There are actually 8,400 of you here who undervoted, which means you didn't vote on this issue at all, didn't fill out yes or no. I say these are unofficial numbers because they are still absentee ballots to count and if the city rejects your ballot for something like a signature issue there's still time between now and May 16th before they are official. When Denver released the first results at 7 p.m. that included the majority of ballots turned in prior to Monday. Decriminalizing magic mushrooms was failing. Denver updated the results every 90 minutes and it didn't change much but the race was getting closer and when 40,000 additional votes were counted between 1 a.m. and this afternoon it had enough to pass. Denver police will now treat possession of magic mushrooms as its least priority. Between 2016 and 2018 there were only 158 arrests for possession. No more says voters and it's really the voters in this green area you'll see the outline of Denver the green areas are the ones that said yes to this the gray areas of Denver did not want to decriminalize magic mushrooms Kyle this really has nothing to do with dealing magic mushrooms that is still illegal but it goes to show that the 8400 people who didn't vote this at all really had an impact on this decision too all right you want to know how much of this still has to get sorted out I just got a text from the city attorney's office which says it's important to note it's not really decriminalization it just gets moved to the bottom of the list. A lot to get sorted out on what is actually going to happen with mushrooms. As long as there's a car accident or something else happening, Denver police have other priorities before they get to mushrooms. If they catch you with the mushrooms, throw a rock through a window. I didn't say that on TV. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Marshall. A security guard captured on video trying to haul away a critic of Democratic Governor Jared Polis has now lost his job. This happened at town hall hosted at Sierra High School in the Springs last weekend. Harrison School District 2 provided security for the event. There you see security at work dragging away a woman who was critical of Polis. Happened after she booed him. She accused the guard of assault, claimed that she'd recently gone through surgery, still had stitches. The school district says the incident was investigated and that guard is no longer employed with them. Governor Polis's office says he was invited to that event by the organizers. It wasn't something set up by his office, and they said he didn't find out about that whole melee until he had already left. snow in May. From what I've heard from all of you, the reviews on this are mixed. That snow up high is coming to Denver tonight. It's all rain and fog right now and it was chilly today. Temperatures running well below the average of 69 and we will expect the showers to continue. Flip over to snow just before midnight and several inches of snow expected on the grass by the time you head out tomorrow morning. Roads will mainly be wet but uh, plants will need protection tomorrow night as we start to see some clearing. We go into a freeze watch tomorrow night. Always tell you not to turn on the sprinklers before Mother's Day. Another cold, wet day coming up. We have rain and snow in the morning, rain in the afternoon. The snow is light in the metro, but heavier amounts above 7,000 feet. And winter weather and travel advisories out for the mountains. Showers, fog, and 32 tonight. Rain and snow when you wake up tomorrow morning. 43 with, well, not much clearing tomorrow. Cold tomorrow night with a freeze watch. And then we have a cloudy and dry day Friday, but sunshine and 70s for Mother's Day. It gets nice and toasty for Monday and then checking a few more thunderstorms for the middle part of next week. A break, and we'll be back. Stay with us. Let's find a fun distraction for a minute or two, shall we? So today was not ideal weather for National Bike to School Day, but ideal biking conditions are rare in Colorado. Even Zoe can tell you that. They're sisters who bike to school every school day. Eva's in second grade at Boulder's Crestview Elementary. Zoe's in fifth. They've pedaled more than a thousand miles this school year. All kinds of weather. Good morning. Uh, 
come here. Eva's idea of riding school every single day just didn't seem very, very feasible at all. So I wasn't sure about it. It took me a while to sort of get mentally on board. I've been riding in a lot of snow, rain. If I'm lucky, nice weather. Eva's really stubborn in a lot of ways. Um, I'm not sure where she gets it, but um, uh, <laughs> So yeah, she she can set herself a goal and, and really see it through. Eva's eight, she's in second grade. Zoe is in fifth grade and she's 11. I think the hardest day was when it was eight degrees, snowing and raining at the same time. And it was really windy. And the path was covered in ice. I learned that we're polluting a lot. I like making sure that I don't use as much gas. It's been nice. It's also been really cold and wet, but it's rewarding. When you're on a bike, I feel like you have the freedom to go whatever speed you want or do tricks. Yeah, I wish that it was perfect temperature sometimes, but I never wish I when we return here, our search for an AV superfan takes us to Sweden and just a minute ago got information about the first official fundraising effort for the family of Kendra Castillo. We'll get that together and I'll share it with you next. Win tonight and the AVs are in the Western Conference Finals. Lose, season's over. Team has an unusual rallying cry these days. Homemade songs from a superfan in Sweden. Hey, get that sweet midi in there. Hampus Liedman recorded the song last year. It went viral. Altitude even used it for one of their shows. Mikko Rantanen was on fire. He was scoring every other game, it felt like. And I got so happy when I saw him score. And... Um, it just popped up into my head, more or less. I've gotten so many tweets about it. Uh, people have their kids singing along to it, and it's so adorable. Miko, 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 Game 7, Avs and Sharks tonight in San Jose. Puck drops at 7 o'clock our time. Jennifer Kunzweiler emailed during the show asking if there's any kind of official fundraising or support page that had been set up for the family of Kendra Castillo, the young man who was killed in the Stem Highlands Ranch shooting. At the time we went on the air, Jennifer, there was not, but we got a message a moment ago from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. There has been a fund set up through Wells Fargo branches. Any branch should be able to direct your donations to the right place. Julie Brooks says, next, should we be glorifying and encouraging children to be heroes during mass shootings? Just like we don't want to reward shooters with notoriety, let's not encourage children sacrificing themselves. That's something to think about. I would welcome your thoughts on how to best cover these situations.